Hello, my name is Ben Buddy Slack, and I'm the founder of the Swanson Project. The Swanson Project is a charity that helps people facing the end of their lives to write and record their own original songs. I've done a series of interviews with songwriters where I asked them um, for one of their songs, tell us a little bit about how they wrote that, for a songwriting tip that might be useful to new songwriters, and also for a song that's meaningful to them in some way relating to bereavement. This episode features Marcus Bonfanti, and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, today I'm here with Marcus Bonfanti. Thanks for joining us, Marcus. Absolute pleasure, Ben, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's great, man. I'm looking forward to chatting to you. We were just saying, um, I think I think we did a gig together maybe nine or ten years ago, one yeah, time we, in Leeds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we shouldn't we shouldn't tell the numbers, man. <laughs> a bit ago, yeah, yeah, a bit ago, yeah. Before <laughs> before this craziness. <laughs> yeah, long before. God, yeah, long before. But yeah, thanks for joining us, Marcus. I really appreciate it. Looking forward to, to chatting to you for a little while. Uh, so if anyone's seen these interviews before, I'll do them in three sections. First, we're going to have one of my guest songs. I'm going to talk a little bit about how they wrote that. Then in section two, uh, Max is going to share with us a songwriting tip that might be useful for new songwriters. And then section three, we're going to talk about a song that's meaningful uh, to Max in some way related to bereavement. So I'll hand you over now if you want to introduce your song, Marcus, and then I'll uh, I'll put that drop into the video. Yeah, the song I've chosen is a, a song called Blind Alley. Um, I, I chose it because we're, we're talking about songwriting. Um, this was actually a co-write between myself, um, James, uh, oh God, I've forgotten the girl's name. That's embarrassing. Um, oh man. She's an American songwriter. She's amazing. And her name has escaped me. And I made sure I learned it before I, we started this. Anyway, sorry. Man. <laughs> it comes to sorry. Real yeah. Um, yeah. I chose this song, uh, because it was a co-write between the three of us and, um, I'd met James before before we were, we were working on a few songs, but I'd never met uh, the American songwriter who came in and we sat for three and a half hours. And by the end of it, we had, we had this great time where we laughed and joked and, and just chatted. And then as if by magic, this song sort of turned up after three and a half hours of doing that. It was very effortless. And for me was really what writing, songwriting in, in a group, um, it should really be like in an ideal world. So um, yeah, it's a song called Blind Alley. It's off my last record. Give me a little bit of your precious time. Give me a little bit, even if you're thinking it's see all mine. Just to know that I know I'll be regretting it, but that's all right. Don't wanna hurt myself, don't wanna hurt myself. Sometimes you do okay. Don't wanna hurt myself. Sometimes the only way is running down a blind alley. Maybe it's a rocky road running down a blind alley. Loving you's a hell of load. Everybody tried to tell me that this ain't the way to go. But I'm staying with this blind alley as far as it goes. Give me a little bit, I know I'm gonna trip and y'all tangle by. Just another sip, I know I'll be regretting it, but that's alright. Don't wanna hurt myself, sometimes you do okay. Don't wanna hurt myself, but sometimes the only way is running down a Blind alley, baby, it's a rocky road running down. Blind alley, loving you's a hell of no. Everybody tried to tell me this ain't the way to go, but I'm staying with this. Blind alley, as far as it goes. Give me a little bit, give me a little bit. 
Give me a little bit, give me a little bit. Give me a little bit, give me a little bit. Give me a little bit, give me a little bit. Don't wanna hurt myself. Sometimes you do okay. Don't wanna hurt myself. Sometimes the only way is hey, running out of blind alleys. Baby, it's a rocky road. Running down a blind alley. Love you to hear the Lord. Everybody tried to tell me this ain't the way to go, but I'm still with this. Blind alley as far as it goes. Stay with us. Blind alley as far as it Okay, yeah, great stuff. So that was Blind Alley by Marcus Bonfanti. So uh, yeah, what can you tell us about writing that? You say you wrote it as a co-writing one, so that's uh, more interested in how different people do co-writing. Yeah, and it was, I suppose I, I would sort of say it was three songwriters of, of varying experience. So, so the, the lady from America, she, she was a very experienced country songwriter. She'd written some big songs for some big people. Um, my friend James, he's, he's a really experienced songwriter, but, um, but maybe sort of 10 years younger than her so maybe you know hasn't been in the business 10 years less than her so and then I was sort of the, the least experienced of all the writers but um it was it was really interesting for me I learned a lot from that session um the one thing that always blows me away when I when I work with experienced writers is they you don't hear their bad ideas it's their editing process in their mind is so fine-tuned you only hear great ideas and then they just pick which of their great ideas works best whereas at that point and still now I'll still come out with some pretty awful ideas out loud <laughs> where I realize I got to throw them out yeah I find it's very hard to edit in your head sometimes I guess that is a skill that gets refined as as uh, yes. I, I look at it as, as um I suppose I've spent so much time on my instrument on my guitar that when I play a solo there is obviously an amount of editing that goes on in my head that I don't notice in order to play the lines that I come out with and and there's obviously things that I think of to play that don't get played and I suppose if if your craft is songwriting then your head works that way that those, those things they obviously pop into your head but you don't even acknowledge them because mm. you know the you know where the song needs to go and what it needs to be mm. and how did you just go about did you just have a uh any kind of idea in mind of what you were aiming for in the co-write or was it just like you mentioned before it was just very relaxed you're kind of sitting around laughing and joking and was there was there like a, a clear objective for it or was it just playing around with ideas and i suppose well it was actually a bit of a surprise really because i i think at the time i didn't i thought i was just going to be writing with james and then i think on the morning on my way over he said oh listen uh, there's this songwriter i know she's in town she's great um, and she's up for coming in and doing something i really think she should come along i think you'd really uh, get on with her you'd have and he was right so it was there was no sort of time to prepare for it or really I think we were actually working on a song that we'd been writing so I don't even think that day we were planning on starting something new but with this sort of trio situation we did and I suppose maybe because because she's um an experienced country artist the song sort of went down a slight country avenue which I was absolutely fine with um but no there was no expectation on it we were just chatting and singing ideas and yeah the way the two of them sort of pieced it all together was was quite magic really I, like i said i learned a lot from that day because it, yeah i felt quite privileged to see two incredible songwriters sort of pulling all these ideas in and actually making them something that was a song like you know we all have great ideas but actually putting them into a tangible song is probably the hardest thing yeah and it sounds like you complete it all in that one session then uh yeah it came together quite quickly <laughs> that is the kind of nashville way i've heard i've never written out there but my friends who have said yeah you go out there and you spend about three and a half hours on a tune and then you know she left after that she had another session to go to man that was a <laughs> morning and then me and james sort of demoed it and was like oh well yeah it's, it's great it was yeah there was no um there was no messing about but it didn't feel rushed that was a weird thing yeah 
it, it, it just felt very natural. And I think if we hadn't had a good idea, we, she wouldn't have just forced a song into the session. It would have just been a three hours that we'd had a nice sort of time getting to know each other. Um, so yeah, that, I think that's probably the reason we did get the song was because the atmosphere was so relaxed. Yeah. Yeah. I think you can't, you can't, you can't force creativity in a way. Can you, you can't be like, you've got to have that relaxed, comfortable vibe to let the ideas, ideas kind of generate. Especially with, with, with co-writing, because I think there's, well, for me is definitely, there's always a slight element of fear that it, what I say, because if you're writing about something personal as well, the idea of being vulnerable in front of people, especially people you don't know and, and people you sort of half know it's, 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 I find it quite terrifying saying something that, you know, is quite vulnerable that people might turn around and go, I don't, no one thinks like that, mate. You're just, very <laughs> but you know what I mean? There's the, there's yeah, that definitely. To make the atmosphere relax means that you, anyone can come out with those things that they think, should I say it? Shouldn't I say it? And if they do say something that doesn't really belong in the song, it's okay. But at least it gets said because you never know. Someone might say something that could totally turn the song on its head and turn it from an all right song into an absolute masterpiece. You just never know. You have to try. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's something that like I wish I'd done more of when I was younger. I wish I was more open to, but I, yeah, again, I was terrified of it, and I still get nervous doing co-writing stuff. Um, but I used to be terrified of it for that fear. And, either, and it's funny, like people, you can, people always kind of set them up as like, you know, it's just a free free idea space. Everyone can, you know, just. But then, like you're always in the like nobody really means that. <laughs> you always think I'm, I'm going to say something, and I'm like, that's stupid. Get out of there. You don't know what a song is. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. It is. I mean, I think it is the worst when someone prefaces a session with like, hey, look, there's no such thing as a bad idea. You sort of think. Well, there's, I can think of many bad ideas right now. <laughs> what you mean to say is don't be scared of saying them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, like you say, you, you learn so much from, from working with different writers everyone brings. And it's, I find something, you know, like you, you, you can fall into patterns of how you write songs and you work with someone else and they just bring something completely different in and one idea just goes down a completely different route. And it's, it's always really fun and exciting. It's the beauty of it, man. That's, that's why I think it's nice to write on your own, but it's so important to write with other people just because you just don't know how another person's brain sees your idea and that's isn't that a songwriting you 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 have the idea you make the song then you put it out in the world and that can be interpreted in so many different ways i mean i'm sure i'm sure now i've got to, got the total wrong end of the stick on many classic songs but i don't care so that's the thing you got you 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 get these ideas and having someone else in the room who goes oh did you mean you say something you go did you mean like in that way and you think no i never thought about it in that way but it's so much better than what i was thinking Let's go down that avenue. Yeah, so you, you know, you, you never, no avenue is never, is ever closed, I suppose, when you've got lots of people with all these different ideas. It's, it's great. Yeah, yeah, it's brilliant. Great stuff, Max. Yeah, thanks for that. So um, let's move into the second section now. So this is where I ask for a, a songwriting tip that uh, might be useful for new songwriters. So uh, what, would you, what would you say, Max, is what have you got for us? I thought a lot about this, right? Because um, there's so many, but there's also like, I don't know. You don't want to. I'm, I'm sure a lot of them have been said because there's there's a lot of things um, that you know you learn along the way. And you're always learning. But um, about two days ago, I was having a conversation with another songwriter that I'm working with at the moment. We're doing some um, sort of over the internet style lockdown uh, project at the moment, which is um, which is quite fun. A little frustrating nice. as well because you can't it'd be so much quicker if you could just sit in a room, but <laughs> yeah. it's not allowed. <laughs> um, what's, anyway, that, what's that project called? And can oh, people. It, 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 it will, it's just basically some um, I can't for some reason I, I don't think I could probably say too much about it yet because it's his thing and I don't okay. want I don't want to steal his thunder of of doing it but it's it's going to be it's it's nothing it's not not like a new band or a, a new collaboration it's just something he's had a great idea I think and uh, he's invited me in to work on it and uh, and we're just working on 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 some songs for it nice. um, like I said I don't want to sort of announce his idea before he does I think I'd be a bit mean yeah, um, that's fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, and and anyway, we were talking about uh, about uh, songwriting as we sometimes do, and uh, one thing we thought we talked about in that phone call actually, I, th I thought that that's that's really probably really relevant. Um, is is always finishing songs. So there's I've worked with a lot of people that have had, and I've been a culprit of it too. Had this unfinished idea that we all think is the idea, and if and we don't want to finish it because we don't want to do it badly, but we know when we finish it, this song, and 
it just becomes this thing that is constantly there needing to be finished. And actually, when you really think about it, it's probably not the best idea you've ever had, but it is stopping you uh, pursuing other ideas or you have an idea you think, oh, no, I'll save that for that song because that one's the winner. And then you end up having this collection of ideas. That, so my advice and I, and I, I can't remember, I, it's not advice that I've made up. I remember someone else, very famous songwriter, reading a book about them. I can't remember exactly who it is because I read a lot of books about people. But they said, always finish a song. Just get it finished and get it, even if it's terrible, even if you finish it, you go, oh, that song's awful. You've done it. The idea is done. Put it away and then move on with the next one because otherwise you'll always be hindered. And I think it's really important um, to not have that that one song that stays with you for like a whole year nagging away at you asking to be finished and you never get to it because, because you think it's such an incredible idea that you, you won't finish it. It, it probably isn't. Maybe it is. And I really hope it is. I hope I have one of those one day where I finish it and I'm like, that's a delta, but you more often than not just finish it, get it out of your mind and move on to the next idea. Because I think songwriting is about keeping that creativity flowing and allowing yourself to be open and affected by things allow it to pass through you and turn into ideas and anything stopping that it's going to make songwriting harder than it needs to be yeah that's really good advice Marcus. i think um i think you're right in terms of like there's there's a good element of like training you know, disciplining yourself to to follow things through so what i find is the the initial inspiration part is the most fun part when you're like, oh great exciting idea i've got a cool lyric here i've got a cool riff or something like that but then you've got to go to that next stage where it's like Right, well, how am I going to write the next verse now? How am I going to, where am I going to go for this part? So like, just like you say, just finishing stuff, it just, even if you throw it away again, it's like you've, you've proven to yourself that you can follow an idea through Most and complete something. And you can always, I'm not saying sort of like rush ideas to then mm. finish um, in, in order to get to the next one. I'm just saying, if you finish a song, there's no rule saying you can't come back to it one day and go, or you'll have that moment where you go, that's what's wrong with the second verse. Yeah. And then you go back to it and but it's finished. It's already a song. And then you're not, you're not trying to write that song. You're just refining that song and you can do that in bits, but it's, it's already a finished work and your mind can move from that onto its next idea. And you're right. Trying to, once you cap, once you get that beginning inspiration bit, it's so important to grab onto that and really chase it because I'm sure we all probably, if we think back to those songs that sort of lost their, momentum it was because they took a very long time to write and then you forgot why you were excited about the idea in the first place and it just became a bit of a chore to get that song done <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely been there and like, yeah, you, yeah. you see it with a lot of artists don't you like you know if an artist will release like a, a b-sides rarities collection type thing and there'll be songs on there that will contain verses or lyrics that ended up in in a hit song later on for them yeah so it's, everyone does it don't they yeah and uh, you know the, the, yeah, I think it's sometimes quite heartening when exactly what you said, when you see those examples and you go, oh, even so-and-so does it. Because yeah. a lot of the time I hold songwriters, I, like, you know, songwriters I admire in this regard where I just think they can't ever write a bad song because I've got yeah. all their records and they're all amazing. <laughs> of course, they're not going to, they're not going to play, they're not going to put their terrible efforts on the records. You sort of forget that Maybe for every great song, there was two or three real terrible ones. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, great stuff. Cool, thanks for that, Marcus. Uh, so let's go into section three now. So this is where I ask for a song that's meaningful in some way to uh, to my guest relating to bereavement. Um, so we've got, we've, we're very lucky, Marcus has recorded a version of him playing this uh, this song. And I'll also put the link to the original in the description. So I'll ask Marcus again to introduce the, the choice of song and then we'll have his performance of it and if you want to hear the original you can also look in the description and follow that through so uh, what song did you choose for us for this section Marcus? I chose a song uh, by Bill Withers called Grandma's Hands um, it's a song he wrote about his grandmother um, who, who died and he uh, he sort of just talks very oh, in that way only Bill Withers and a few a handful of others can do in that really conversational way just about the things he misses about his grandmother things that and and they're all very like beautiful little vignettes of growing up it's nothing overblown but when you listen to it you just sort of think it's that relationship of a, of a grandma or grandparent and a grandchild it's a very unique relationship and i just think he sums it up beautifully and at the very end he just he sums up the feeling of of, of losing someone like that in a in a really matter of fact yet very beautiful way 
Grandma's hands clapped in church on Sunday morning. Grandma's hands played a tambourine so well. Grandma's hands used to issue out a warning. She'd say, Billy, don't you run so fast. Might fall on a piece of glass. Then maybe snakes there in that grass. Grandma's hand Grandma's hand Sue the local unwed mother Grandma's hand They used to ache sometimes and swear Grandma's hand Used to lift her face and tell her She'd say Baby Grandma understand that you really love that man You put yourself in Jesus' hands Grandma's hand Grandma's hand used to hand me a piece of candy. Grandma's hand, they pick me up each time I fell out. Oh, grandma's hand, boy, this shot had come in handy. She'd say, Matthew, why you whip that boy? What you want to spank him for? He didn't drop no apple cow, but I don't have grandma anymore. When I get to heaven, I'll look for grandma's hand. Okay, great. So that was uh, Marcus Bonfanti's rendition of Grandma's Hands by Bill Withers. So yeah, so you were saying a little bit beforehand about um, about some of your reasons for choosing it. Does it have a, um, a particular resonance with you in any other way? I really like what you're saying about it's that it's so particular in these real human. Um, yeah. It's yeah, it's not overblown and like trying to be poetic, and it's just it's just a real, very relatable song. It puts you there, man. I mean, I didn't I didn't grow up. My my, I, when I listen to that song, I can't relate to Bill Withers growing up. You know what I mean? My grandma, I didn't go to church with my grandma. Well, I did in Italy with my nonna, but it's a different kind of church than uh, a Southern States of America sort of all singing or dancing church. I went to a Catholic church with her that was a uh, uh, well, a lot more boring without uh, <laughs> <laughs> without being offensive. But I think you know. Um, anyway, um, yeah. Uh, so. I think it's just, it makes me think that the relationship, I loved my grandparents. I, 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 and, and I think most, if you're lucky enough to have them, you, you do have that special relationship with them. They're, they're, I don't know, they're just quite fascinating as, 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 as family members because they never, they don't tell you off. They always, because they've been parents and they've, and they've then seen their children grow up and have children. It's almost like they sort of sit off and just sort of have their arms folded and laugh a little bit. <laughs> at their children having to go through what they went through and thinking, oh yeah, you know, this is, uh, this, you're, you're now learning and I'm going to be the, I'm going to have all the fun. I'm going to give the, the, the grandson, granddaughter what they want and have fun with them and play with them. And that's my memory of, of, of all the grandparents that I had. And so when I listen to that Bill Withers thing, I just, like you said at the top there, it's not overly poetic, but it is in, in the fact that it's so normal and just, he, he, he tells the story of who, how his grandma was to him. Then the second verse, he sort of tells about how his grandma was to others around her. You know what I mean? Sue, the local unwed mother, all that kind of thing. It's like he builds up in three verses this picture that you can see. You can see this woman 
you sort of know so much about this woman and he's only sung three verses. And by the end, end is like, when he's like, but I don't have grandma anymore. You are genuinely very upset by the fact that he doesn't. And it's, I don't know, it's just, um, you don't get too many songs about that relationship between grandparent and, and grandchild. And I, I, it's a very interesting relationship. I can't really think of too many others. Mm. Yeah, you're right. It is a kind of a underexplored territory, I guess, in some ways. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think you're right. This is something that I'm kind of thinking more and more of now about with songwriting that I used to be fans of, you know, like very complex lyrical things. And, and I'm appreciating more and more and being drawn more and more to song. I think songs that say a lot with a little. Mm. Um, and yeah, I think this is a great example of it. You know, like it's, yeah, it, it paints such a rich picture. And it's only like, it's only like two minutes original, isn't it? It's a very short song. <laughs> but it's just, it. there's so much, um, yeah, like you say, it just paints that picture and you really get that sense of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And as I suppose there's a, there's a great live version from uh, his live at Carnegie Hall album, um, which, I mean, because obviously Bill Withers died only a couple of months ago. So I've sort of, I mean, I've always listened to him since I can remember and I mean I've sang that song at various gigs since I was about 20 years old um so is but then since he died I've been listening to him quite a lot more I think it's what a lot of people do isn't it when mm -hmm. a musician that they really have loved in the past passes away you you sort of go ah oh, you sort of I don't know you just tend to revisit it more I don't know why but um so I was listening to a lot to him a lot more and playing him to my daughter so she could sort of appreciate um you know his songs and there's a version on the live at Carnegie Hall where he does a, a, just a fantastic set up to that song. He talks very candidly and really funny about, about his gra him and his grandma in church and then launches it. And it, it's, it, it's that sort of thing that and I've tried to do it a few, tried to sort of steal that effect a lot when I play live, because I think it's just a very beautiful thing to do. He, he makes you laugh about this situation about him and his grandmother in church. And there's, other characters and he's very funny and he tells this very funny story and then he just goes into that song and almost immediately you're brought back down to like oh real melancholy and it's yeah it's well worth listening to man because there's not many musicians who can sort of do that yeah sort of click of the fingers take you right back to where they where they want you to be um yeah yeah it's just a great song yeah yeah he's a master isn't he? is that the version that you say is that one on youtube though that's the one that's I, I'm pretty sure it's on on YouTube sorry Ben I'm, I'm a little I'm a little analog man so I've got to <laughs> put it on vinyl but uh, it must be on YouTube it must be it must be yeah if I can find it on YouTube I'll put that in the description so uh, people yeah, can can check it out um but yeah great stuff thanks thanks Marcus uh really nice talking to you My absolute and, pleasure. yeah thank you and uh I'll, I'll tag your your pages and stuff in the description so people can go and follow you have you got any upcoming releases are you doing any live online streams or anything like that coming up i do the odd online stream yeah i i, I don't do it often enough probably um which, which actually yeah because a lot of people have written to me and said that they really enjoy them and i, I do enjoy doing them but it's a I bit strange want to, <laughs> I want them to be the normal thing man we've got to get back out we've got to get interacting with people again so i do do some facebook live stuff for people who curate these that a lot of people curating online festivals mm. I think it's a really cool idea so i I, I, that's just about the top of my technological know-how um, is, is being able to set up a Facebook live thing and then the other person sort of slots it in where it needs to be. And that's great. But I am actually working on a new record at the moment um, with a, uh, with a producer actually up in Yorkshire way. Um, we were before all this, we were, I was traveling up to Yorkshire and uh, uh, he lives just outside of York and uh, spending weeks with him and we were writing together and started recording and we recorded quite a lot before we were sort of all, all, all locked up. So um, we are sort of still working on that again, sort of across the airwaves. Um, but hopefully we're getting closer to the, you know, I, I mean, I'm really hoping I can just go back up to his studio in York. I'll stand two meters away from anyone and just, just stand there and get back working on it. I'm very excited about this record. It's a lot more based around songs than records I've done in the past. They've all got songs on, but this one I've, I've really feel like um, I've learned a lot about songwriting between my last record and this one. And I'm really, I, I feel like I'm definitely saying some things that I would have liked to have said in other records, but maybe didn't know how. Brilliant. Yeah. We'll look forward to, uh, to that coming out, hopefully in the not too distant future. Yeah. It shouldn't be too long. Yeah. Yeah. So I encourage everyone to follow Max's pages and, uh, keep an eye on those, uh, 
upcoming releases any, any live live streams you're doing thanks a lot for joining us marcus uh, really appreciate your time all right thank you and thanks everyone for tuning in i'll be back with another episode soon